You tuned to RTE Radio 1. Monica Moody is standing by in Studio 5 now. She'll be on the air for the next 30 minutes. And as she might say herself, isn't it awful? Yeah, yeah, over there, Brida. No, no, nearer to the microphone. Oh, Brida, you haven't seen any of those Brendan Howland dolls with the little outfits around, have you? Remember we had them on the show a few weeks ago? Mm. No, it's just I was thinking of getting one for Ronan. He's mad about Brendan Howland. Last month it was Larry Mullen, now it's Brendan Howland. Oh, teenagers, honestly. Yeah, let's tell you, definitely dead. We oh, have to three bullets. Here's Garrett and right. Connor Cruz. Ben. Oh, God, Garrett, do you have to ben. make so much noise? Ben. Garrett, stop Great. that noise. Oh, sorry, Mike. And you too, Dr. Connor Cruz O'Brien. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're only in here a wet week, the pair of you, and you're running down the corridors, shouting and playing silly games, distracting serious broadcasters. Oh, God, Garrett, what are you wearing? It's our new cowboy outfits, Mike. Oh, uh, me and Connor Cruz got them at the horse show. I'm oh. a sheriff and Connor's my deputy. You see our badges? Dr. Fitzgerald, former world leader. I won't say I'm angry, but I'm very disappointed. Sit down there and drink your milk. Oh, Agree to get him a straw, would you? And yeah. Dr. Connor Cruz O'Brien, leading statesman and intellectual, stop loitering around the RTE complex and go home. Go on, get out. Go on and give Bibi back her jacket. I'm ready, John. Welcome to the Monica Moody Show. And I'd just like to say at this juncture, isn't it awful about Ring a Skiddy? As if Cork didn't have enough problems with unemployment, Liam O'Muerhu, and now on top of everything, they're all radioactive. It's awful. Yeah, it's really now, bad. my guests in the studio today are Pam Malone, who I'll be talking to in a few minutes. Welcome, Pam. Hello, Monica. Marriage guidance counsellor, Father Tom Doughty. Good day, Monica. And he'll be talking to us about marital breakdown, an area I must confess I know absolutely <laughs> nothing about. And, of course, yes, Dr. Well. Garrett Fitzgerald. Garrett, take off that silly hat. Uh, no, Monica, it's, it's an authentic Billy the Kid 10 guy. Take hat. it off, Garrett. It'll make you go bald. Oh, right. <laughs> Well, it's the first week in August. It's Dublin Horse Show Week. It's the absolute climax of my social year. And it's just a pity it's so wet. Mm. <clears throat> but I love it. The style, the glamour, the smell of the horses. Uh, and the bouncy castle. Oh, yes, and the bouncy castle. There were a few tears over that, weren't there, Garrett? Uh, oh. No, on the country. Oh, I, no, I, I told you not to have that wibbly-wobbly wonder beforehand, didn't I? I warned you, didn't uh, I? Something else altogether. <laughs> Anyway, Garrett and I went to the horse show on Thursday, listeners. Oh, Pam, you were there, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. We had a bit of a girls' day out. <laughs> oh, yes, well, of course, <laughs> it was ladies' day, wasn't it? All mm. those lovely fashion competitions, weren't they marvellous, Pam? Yeah, great. Mm. Really glamorous. Mm, really glamorous, yes. A anything else you'd like to say about the fashion competitions, Pam? Uh, mm? No, no, I don't think so. Garrett, Garrett, anything to add here? Uh, mm? th there were some very nice ladies' hats. Oh, remember uh, the mother and daughter competition? Anybody want to mention anything about that? Pam, I told you in hospitality. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Listen, congratulations on finishing second in the mother and daughter competition, oh, Monica. Oh, yes. Sorry, oh, I forgot Pam, to say Pam, you it. said you wouldn't bring it up. You're a minx, really. I'm sorry, I thought you told Shut me up, to Pam. say it. Yes, listeners, you're listening to the second prize winner of the Dublin Horse Show, Mother and Daughter. Daughter competition. <laughs> well, you see, Orti asked me, well, begged me actually to enter. A sort of a celebrity appearance thing, you know? So anyway, I didn't even dress up for it, just threw something on. So mm, you can well, imagine my embarrassment when they gave me the second prize. <laughs> I mean, obviously, really great, a woman like though. me, constantly in the public eye, couldn't come first, you know? But honestly, I, I, I thought I'd die. It was terribly but, and funny. And Monica, <laughs> your daughter looked really beautiful. Most she did. Her. Yeah, a breed of coffee. Thank so you. did you make like her little um, yokey thing? dress oh, yourself. Oh, you know, I have a little woman. You know yourself, Pam. Anyway, about my outfit. But won't they 
saying Monica. Now yeah. it's funny, but I always thought Kira was older than that. I don't really? know why, mm. but I thought she was a teenager. Mm. Why did I think that? Well, I don't know, Brita. Where the hell is uh, the funny, coffee? I, I thought that too. Yeah, yeah because like this kid, she was only five or six. Hey, she dead. Uh, Mike, your daughter Kira would certainly not fall into that age category. Oh, would she? oh, the expert speaks. Oh, you've met my daughter Kira, have you, girls? Uh, no, I haven't met her, but I yeah. do know she's a lot older. I mean, her educational attainments. Oh, yeah. Certainly, yeah. he's she's a world bigger. authority on childcare, Pam. <laughs> Garrett Fitzgerald, for your information, she has a stumped frame. Yeah, it's but a she... spine thing. Well, I, I, I don't want to I talk about it. Monica, she definitely didn't look like a don't, teenager. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How could I forget? It was my other daughter, uh, Judy. Judy Moody. Judy. <laughs> Surprising choice, Judy Garrett, Moody. I'm Judy Moody. You. Hell, my name is Judy it's Moody. It's a pet name, Garrett. <laughs> that's, that's Sorry, silly, Monica. I thought name. you'd only one daughter. Okay, okay, fine. I took the kid. All right, happy. Hmm? It was the only bloody competition I stood a chance in. I needed a daughter in a hurry. I was desperate. So why didn't you use um, what's her name, Kira? Oh, use Kira. Great idea, Miss Clearasol, nineteen ninety-three. Oh, give me some credit, Pam. Uh, I beg your pardon, Monica. This is this is quite serious. You, you stole a child. Oh, don't be insane, Father Tom. Of course, I didn't steal a child. I just borrowed her for a bit. She was in the lost children's tent. It's not as if anyone missed her. And anyway, I was very nice to her. I got Garrett to buy her a chalk ice. Oh, was that supposed to be for her? Oh, look, I, I... look. Can we? We move on. Fine. Now, my first guest today is a woman I admire deeply. She's the wife of a leading society doctor. I, I know you won't mind me saying that, Pam. Sure. She's a keen gardener, like Thelma Mansfield. She's a big fan of the horses, one of Ireland's leading beer mat collectors. Oh, yeah, and as if that wasn't enough, she still finds time to be president of the Irish Association of Negligent Mothers. Pam Malone, first of all, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Monica. Pam, negligent mothers, a very serious problem. Yeah, yeah, mm. it is really serious, mm. very serious. Pam, question. What's the biggest difficulty that negligent mothers have to face today in your experience? Um, well, there are three. Ooh. Uh, for example, lack of transport, mm -hmm. you know, cars. Yeah. I suppose that would be one. Um, mm -hmm. Money, lack of. Right. And yeah. isolation. Isolation. Mm. Explain, Pam. Well, see, many negligent mothers are isolated mm -hmm. and they've no way of getting in touch with other negligent mothers. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to get the idea that you're the only negligent mother in the mm -hmm. world. Do you know what I mean? No, I think I know that feeling. And so that's where you come in, isn't it, Pam? Yeah. Mm. The Irish Association of Negligent Mothers tries to get these women, negligent mothers, mm -hmm. together. Mm. And we've got a range of activities designed to help them overcome mm. their problem of isolation. <laughs> now, a range of activities, that sounds very formal, no, you know, oh hearing God, it like that, very no. daunting, Pam. But it, it's not actually like that at all <laughs> no. in practice, is it? <laughs> no, it's mm. nothing like that. I mean, we do have some organised activities, right, you know, yeah. like group shopping, um, yard of ale contests, nice. raids. But yeah, yeah. mostly we just do things on the spur of the moment, mm. like... We all pile into the back of a car, throw in a few cases of wine and go to Bray, for example. Right. And, you know, like, it's really nice to get away from the house, spend the afternoon mm. drinking, mm. hanging around the amusement arcade, oh, talking to Spanish there. students. So the key is negligent mothers being negligent together. Pam. Yeah, something mm. like that. And, Pam, what about the children? Who's minding the children while you're all out doing this? I mean, you've got three children yourself, haven't uh, you? Yeah, three, mm. four, something like that. And, and who takes care of those children, Pam? Well, um, there's usually some kind of a babysitter around. Lovely. Yeah. And oh. then when we get to Bray, we oh. usually ring them, you know. Mm. Uh, but mm -hmm. sometimes we can't because, um, well, we can't remember the number oh, know, or yeah. there's a queue of the phone oh, or you need yes. a stupid phone card. <laughs> yes. you know, and so your children sometimes are left alone, Pam Malone, or Pam Home Alone Malone, as you're known locally. <laughs> home Alone Malone. Malone. Uh, yeah, Judy sometimes, Moody. and yeah. that can create a problem, yeah. yeah. And what kind of problem, Pam? Well, guilt, I suppose, mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. see, like, um, a mother leaves her child unattended, and she's told by society that she must feel guilty. Right, now, yeah. this is something that really pisses us off. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. we have this uh, blame the baby thing oh, yeah, yeah. to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you say to the baby, you're my baby, 
fine, but I'm going to Bray and there's nothing you can do to stop me. And it doesn't have to be Bray. It mm. could be anywhere. The pub, the bookies, Tremor. Pam, critics might say at this juncture that what you're advocating is that mothers behave in a completely irresponsible fashion. Yeah. You know, and that, that this might be in some way bad for the child. Yeah. But Pam, you do care. And you care passionately about your children, don't you? I mean, tell us what happened last week. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we went to Bray, right? Oh, no, no, no. The following day. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Well, we went to Bray. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the day after that, my fault. The Wednesday, Pam. The day your children got the BCG oh, injection. Yeah, yeah. That. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, apparently, mm. we found out none of our kids have had their BCGs. <laughs> so, we bring them to our centre, right? right? It's a room at the back of the pub. Mm -hmm. And we've got this nurse coming, right, from mm -hmm. the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. So... Anyway, it's a long story, blah, blah, blah. The nurse doesn't show. <laughs> Typical. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, mm. So we're going mad. Oh, we're yeah. stuck there. Kids screaming oh, God, oh, God, know, everywhere. Know, know, no mm. sign of the nurse. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do. <laughs> we're just going up the walls, okay? <laughs> we're having a few drinks mm. when suddenly Joan Flaherty, one of uh, our Joan, members. Yes, of course, I know Joan. Yeah, yes, well, yes. <laughs> she sees an ad in the paper, right? Mm. And it's for a weekend in the Canaries. Oh. For like a couple of hundred quid. Oh. So, we all pile into the back of the car, few takeouts, oh. belt off the airport. Three hours later, mm. we're lying beside the poo. Marvellous time. Oh. Everybody happy problem solved. Magic. And I'd say the kids loved that. Oh, no, they weren't there. <laughs> oh, well, if you can't have a bit of fun, why bother, eh? Well, exactly. That's our whole point. Mm -hmm. Something like that. You know? Pam Malone, I envy you. You're a mother, but you're not letting your children no. rule your life. You and your association are doing marvellous work. And I only wish you'd been around when I had Kira. <laughs> Stay with us. Love Read a coffee Monica. and Vicky's mm. there. I have a gin and tonic. Do you have gin? Monica Moody. Now at this juncture, I'd just like to say the weather isn't it awful. Pam, have you ever known a worse summer? Oh God, I know. It's awful. We've oh. had to cancel loads of outings, picnics, few barbecues. No, I haven't used yes. my spinning ring once. Oh mm. dear, and the kids can't get out. Well, they don't get out anyway. <laughs> I don't suppose. <laughs> and you can't blame all the Labour government ministers for leaving the country en masse and holidaying abroad, can you? I just wonder where Michael D. Higgins is going. Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't a clue. Oh. Have you ever noticed that there's usually a civil war after he's left a country? Really? Mm. I suppose we'll just have to keep an eye on the papers for that one. But let's all hope that the weather improves for September. For the wedding of the decade, Adam Clayton and supermodel Naomi Campbell. Anyway, with that in mind, we decided to take a look at the whole area of marital breakdown. And for the first time, we've a priest in the studio. He's a marriage counsellor. He's Father Tom Doughty. Welcome. No, thank you, Monica. I'm a very big fan of your hit show. Oh, thank you so much. I always make sure now that I'm rostered for a morning mass so that I won't miss mm. it. <laughs> As I say to my bishop, you can miss mass, but you can't miss Monica. <laughs> That's a little joke. Yeah, yes, and it's a very nice little joke, Father Tom. Now, Father Tom, marital breakdown. It's not a problem I know the first thing about, thank God, but we have seen a huge increase in marital Indeed. breakdown in this country Indeed. over the past Indeed. few years, particularly since Mary Robinson became president, funnily enough. Why, Father Tom? Well, couples today, I think they expect too much, Monica. Oh. They think it's all going to be rosy from the word go, and then when something goes wrong in a marriage, they don't work at it. They just give up. Witness the Smurfettes. And oh. the tragedy, Monica, is that many of these problems can be worked out through simple communication. Mm -hmm. But many couples just don't communicate at all. And communication is the key word, isn't it? Mm. I firmly believe that communication is the key to a healthy marriage. I believe that strongly. And as far as I know, my husband Tony does too. Communication. Vital. And sex, Father Tom? Uh, uh, no thanks, Monica. I've a vow of celibacy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't encourage him, Tom. Um, you, you open a window. Father Tom, let me put it another way, because this whole business of marital breakdown is completely alien to me, I'm happy to say. What are the other key elements to a happy marriage? Oh, well, Manic, uh, all joking aside, because marriage is a serious business. Oh, tell that to Frank and Teresa. Any more tonic around here? Uh, well, no. Actually, no, it's gin I need. Seriously, not. That was only a little joke. Yes, we understand that, Father Tom. Yeah. Move along. Well, what I said to all my couples is to always keep the church in their marriage. Yes, it is terribly important, oh, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, Too many couples today think that the role of a priest in a marriage ends oh. when the bride and groom leave the altar. Mm. And that simply isn't true. Yeah, I mean, they get to go to the reception as well, don't they? And I've never known one to bring a present, Pam, have you? <laughs> well, no, I'm talking about something on a larger uh, scale. Sorry, Monica. Father Tom, uh, talking to Pam. Have you, Pam? Have you ever known a priest to bring a wedding present? Say yes and give me a heart attack. Nope, oh. never seen mm -hmm. it. Listen, who do you have to sleep with round here to get another drink? <laughs> I think you've had enough to drink, Pam. Oh, go on, Father Tom. Marital breakdown. Right. A totally closed book as far as I'm concerned. How can a couple, say Adam and Naomi, for example, save their marriage? How can they put the church in their celebrity marriage? Hmm? Uh, well, of course, Adam digs with the other foot, doesn't he? And uh, I'm not sure what religion mm. Naomi is. Oh, I dread to uh, think, I dread to It could be anything. Um, mm. Exactly. Oh. So they're not perhaps the ideal couple to choose as an oh. example. Uh, well, if, if we pick a young Catholic couple, no, like... No, well, uh, how about Pat and Kathy? Mm. Uh, well, no, I was thinking more along the lines of uh, Dick Spring and his lovely wife, Kirsty. Oh, no, what, just... what I would say to a couple like that is invite the church into your marriage and into your home. Yes, Tony and I always have our local curate over at Christmas. Mm. Yeah, our priest is always calling as well. well it's All not the quite time. the same thing though, is it, Pam? I mean, our priest doesn't bring the school board and the guards with him. Doesn't he? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Monica, it, it, it's, a, it's a, a nice gesture, lovely gesture, having the priest around at Christmas time. Oh. But ask yourself, is it enough? Well, I don't know if my drinks cabinet could stand two clerical batterings a year. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. Ronan gets very upset when Father John calls. I don't know why that is. Oh, Comment, is. Father Tom. Oh, well, I have no idea what that's about, Monica. That's not my turn. Fine, fine. Talk. Let's get no. back to Dick and Kirsty and the whole area of marital breakdown, which I personally know nothing about. More generally, Father, what can a couple do to save their marriage? Well, as I was saying, Sorry. maybe two or three evenings a week, have the priest there. Oh. Maybe for dinner, a couple of bottles of wine, discuss any problems they might be experiencing. A couple of bottles of wine. Oh, no, no, Monica, don't get me wrong. I am not suggesting that the priest should drive home afterwards. Oh, well, I'm glad that we cleared that one up. <laughs> I mean, what are you suggesting, Father Tom? Well, oh? I think in these cases, if they kept a, a small bedroom for the priest... Oh, then... so you could stay over? Oh, no, nothing fancy. I'd be grand in the box room. <laughs> The priest's hole. <laughs> Do you know that expression? And not in that context, oh, Father, no. Well, of course, I fully realise that this is a fairly tall order. Oh. Uh, many young couples, especially with children, won't have a spare room, so if they just give the priest a small camp bed in, in their bedroom... Oh, and a pair of jam jams, huh? Oh, I'd never bother with anything like that, Monica. No, <laughs> if, if they have a king-size bed, uh, oh. then we could uh, dispense with the camp bed altogether. Oh. Uh, we could get the church right in there, right at the heart of the marriage. Oh. I could crawl in under the covers. Yes, yes, worth my fine, nail. Father Tom, I oh, think we dad. get the pink chair. Bring the church into the marriage. Yeah, oh. Right in there, where the action is, so oh. to speak. Now, Dick and Kirsty Spring, for example, you mentioned the picture there. I've, I've done some drawings. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm uh, sure you have. Rita, can you call security? Uh, no, now, Father are. Tom, I should point out to the listeners that you're retiring next month, isn't that right? Well, that's true, all right. Now, oh. you see, here's the bed. Oh, yes, yes. And here Rita, I you tell am, them it's and urgent. Cold Kirstie's red, Rita. Leg sticking and, and, and how, how did Kirstie. Dick get down there? I oh, know, you're looking at the wrong way. It's the wrong no way. way. There we are. Anyway, Father Tom Doughty, you've devoted your life to serving couples with problem marriages and we wish you a happy retirement oh let's take him away would you Monica Rooney, she's the best. Oh, 
spring. I couldn't say oh, big spring. I knew you made my flesh crawl. Whatever. Listeners, I'd like to apologize for that last interview with Father Tom Doughty. It seemed to be going fine, and then it all went horribly wrong. To have a man like that as a marriage counselor, oh, it's sick making. Garrett Ten Quid says he's not even a priest. Well, I say you're right. But they'd never let someone like that be a priest, would they? You know, it's um, funny. Well, I think I've seen I him know. before, actually. Oh, really? And where was that? Actually, you know, it was in Bray. Mm. He was hanging around the amusement arcade. Looking really seedy. I'm well, like, all right, I could be wrong. Maybe he is a priest, but a very unsavoury character, not, notwithstanding. We'll move on. Oh, give us a bicky there, Garrett. Right, I'm absolutely right. starving. Garrett, I've asked you not to eat the chocolate off them and put them back in the packet. It's d- I, I, disgusting. I, I, I'm saving it for Connor. He's not allowed to eat chocolate. Never mind, chocolate. we let it go this time. Now, I'm sure many of you have seen the heartbreaking stories in the papers this week about Kimberly Twig, the little girl who was swapped at birth for another child and who this week took her natural parents to court in the state. There was a mini-series about on, on a couple of weeks ago, you know. In fact, there are lots of mini-series on at the moment, aren't they? It's marvellous. Anyway, swapped at birth. Could it happen here? Has it happened here? Kathleen Healy, welcome. Thanks, now, Kathleen Healy, for the past 10 years, you've been fighting a lone battle in the courts to have the details of your birth certificate altered, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's mm. correct. Because, Kathleen, you believe that you were switched at birth for another baby. Uh, yes, mm. uh, Monica, I have Can conclusive evidence that uh. I was swapped hours, uh, just hours mm-hmm. after I was born mm. for another baby girl who'd been born around the same time. It's quite a story, Kathleen. Oh, I can already see Cheryl Ladd as the mother, Pam. Mm. Now, Kathleen, tell us how this extraordinary mistake happened. Yeah, well, you see, Monica, I was born in the Hollis Street Hospital. Oh, well, first mistake. Mm. Yeah, um, on September the 16th um, of the 1962, mm. right, at the 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, same time as I had Kira, yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, go on, Kathleen. And, mm. see, now I have on my person conclusive evidence mm. that sometime around the 4.30 a.m., mm. I was placed in the wrong cot in the nursery wow. with another baby girl mm. being left in my cot. Mm. I was literally swapped. And, and how did this dreadful thing happen, Kathleen? I mean, who would swap two tiny babies? Any ideas? Well, what? no, but I have two theories. Oh, big man, beard, interest in arts and literature, Protestant. Oh, Monica, oh, no. Sorry, oh you... never mind, Garrett. I have my own theory, but go on. Huh? Well, you see, I believe that one of the nurses may have been drunk. Monica, oh. because it was the week of the All Ireland final, oh. and I think that maybe a nurse from the country oh. performed the swap through drunken confusion oh. or just through high spirited inter county rivalry. Uh, Monica, oh, as a doctor, I really must protest that this slur cast oh, for the entire Garrett, nursing profession. Give it up. It Pam Doesn't Malone, happen. you were a nurse before you married a doctor. Any truth in this possible slur on the whole nursing <laughs> profession? <laughs> oh, God, of course, Monica. Oh, yeah. I mean, now, come on. You have mm-hmm. to realise that nurses, like everybody else, sorry, sorry, excuse oh, me. Oh, should be careful with um, They have to let off steam occasionally. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a very stressful job. Mm-hmm. So switching the name tags on babies is just one of the ways this can be done. It's mm-hmm. quite funny. It really is. It's mm-hmm. a good laugh. But, like, it's not meant maliciously or anything. It's all good fun. Right. But, of course, it can lead to tragedy. Mm-hmm. I, I remember one time me and some other nurses... <laughs> God, it was mad. We were absolutely mad. Um, this was in Vincent's, right? Mm-hmm. And we crash landed slap bang on top of the intensive care unit. In, in, it was in what? very funny. You crash landed in what? In a on helicopter. Top of... We were in a oh helicopter. It was absolutely oh. mad. Sounds hilarious, Pam. Yes. <laughs> so, so it could have been a drunk nurse who switched Kathleen Haley as a baby, Pam. Easily. Oh, absolutely. Well, now... That's one theory. Second theory, Kathleen Healy, swamped baby extraordinaire. My second explanation, Monica, and I believe that this is the more plausible one, is that I was swapped by the grand old gentleman of the Irish theatre, Cyril Cusack. Now, this sounds more interesting. Cyril Cusack. One question, Kathleen. 
Why, Kathleen? Yeah, well, Monica, you see, I've carried out extensive research into this and I've discovered that Cyril Cusack's wife gave birth to one of her daughters at around the same time as I was born, you see? And it's my belief that Cyril, overcome with happiness, had a couple of cognacs, possibly with some of his theatrical friends in the pub, you know, Mm -hmm. um, maybe your man Edward and the Mm -hmm. other one, McLeamore, Mm -hmm. right? And um, then after drinking, he arrived in hospital in Mm -hmm. Hollis Street Hospital, drunk, like completely Mm -hmm. rat arsed, Mm -hmm. and Uh, he slipped into the nursery, picked up his newborn daughter, Mm -hmm. and then put her back into the wrong cot, perhaps Mm -hmm. while a nurse who had also may have been drunk was out. Thank you, Garrett. Right, right. So what you're saying, Kathleen, is that you were switched at birth with one of Cyril Cusack's daughters. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's Mm. right, Monica. Yeah, Mm. yeah. And you see, all the evidence points to my being swapped in my cot by um, your man, Cyril Cusack, Mm -hmm. for the baby that we know today as Sinead Cusack, Mm. the one who's married to uh, the actor Jeremy Irons. It's an extraordinary claim, Kathleen. And now, you say that you are really Sinead Cusack and the woman we know as Sinead, the one who's married to Jeremy Irons, is... Is Kathleen Healy? Yeah, mm. that's absolutely right, Monica. Now, how did you discover this amazing switch, Kathleen? Well, um, you see, when I was in school, I was always interested in putting on plays and mm. things. And even as a small child now, I was drawn to the stage, you know, mm-hmm. and I showed unusual talent. Mm-hmm. Like, I was always Mary into the nativity play mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And um, then when the, the other girls were talking about boys and the smoking and, and that in the cloakrooms, I was always in the toilets practicing my soliloquies. And that's when I began to suspect that I was really Sir Cusack's daughter. Extraordinary. Yeah. Oh. And almost every time I saw him then on the television, I felt very strange, almost ill. Oh, well, I wouldn't mind that. But the compulsive acting is interesting. Mm. Yeah. And then, am I right, Kathleen, you checked your dates and discovered that Sinead Cusack had been born at the same time yeah. as you. Yeah, yeah, at exactly the same time, give or take mm. a few days. Because, Kathleen, I, I've had Breeda check this, oh. and I, it's a bit more than a few days isn't it? It's a few well, a few months yeah. really, isn't it, Kathleen? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, really? give or take. Mm. But you see, babies can vary in enormously um, mm-hmm. in size. Well, I, I mean, it was a different y- hospital too, wasn't it, Kathleen Lovey? Uh, mm. No, yes. Hollis Street. Yes, but Sinead Cusack was born in a different hospital, Kathleen. Um, mm. Yeah, but you see, Cyril had been drinking quite a lot of cognac, you see, mm. and um, perhaps in the plough uh, across uh, yes, the Abbey. Well, uh, right, we'll, we'll leave it so, Kathleen. But like, what about Sorka? I mean, when was she born? And, and who she married uh, No, no, lovey, we'll move on. Mm, mm. Kathleen Healy, you've been through a dreadfully traumatic experience. You're taking very strong medication. Well, You're our I woman of the week. Here's your hairdryer. There's some men waiting outside to take you back. Kathleen Healy, thank you. Monica. I'll tell you what, though, Garrett, there's something in this baby swapping thing. Oh, that's lovely, Carmen Cita. Yep, I'm convinced Kira's not mine. She's nothing like me, for one thing, and she's not at all bright. Now, Hugh O'Connor now, John O'Connor's boy, you know, I have an idea that he's really mine. He's very talented, and they're about the same age. What do you think, Garrett? Have you ever wondered if Ethna Fitzgerald was swapped at birth? She doesn't look like you at all. For the last time, Ethna Fitzgerald is not my daughter. Mm, I'd be inclined to go along with you on that one, Dr. Fitz. Pam, do you worry that your children might have been swapped? No. No, couldn't care less, could you, anyway? Put it another way, Pam... Did you personally swap any babies when you were a nurse? Maybe as a sort of a prank, maybe. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I did, Monica. Really? I can remember. Can't remember what I swapped it for though. Two hundred silk cuts, something like that. <laughs> oh, no, Pam, Pam, let me put it another way. You worked as a nurse when I had yeah. Kira. Mm. Did you swap Kira, Pam? Mm. Stop it, Carmen Zeta. No, not as far as I can remember. But it's a bit of a blur. Pam, is it too late? What do you mean? To swap Kira. I could make it worth your while, Pam. She's only 14. She could start a new life, maybe in South America. Well, sorry, oh, boy, Monica, nice. this is very confusing. Now, just to clarify, mm. do you want to swap her or do you want to sell her? Oh, Pam, what kind of a mother do you think I am? I'd never sell my own daughter. And I'm sickened that listeners up and down the country are hearing this well, conversation. because I know this bunch of people in Bray. Oh, no, right? no, no, too close. Have to be outside the country. Look, we leave it. And that's all we have time for. My thanks to Pam, Home Alone Malone, Father Tom Doughty, Kathleen Healy, Carmen Sita Hederman and Dr. Garrett Fitzgerald. 
I'm Monica Moody. Will you let me in? The Monica Moody Show featured Pauline McLean, Pom Boyd and Jonathan White, with Carmen Cita Hederman on piano. The script was written by Jerry McNamara and Fiona Looney. Monica Moody was devised by Jerry McNamara, and the show was produced by John Cadden. <laughs>